Howdy! This is Jay Shell for EUG and AODL. Welcome back to my channel of various things keeping this old hermit alive. This is a photography one. This is the Lomo LCA, the Lomo Compact Automatic. A very small 35mm film camera. Uh, this is a Russian version with the Lomography Society uh, packaging and styling um, before the Russian factory stopped making those and these were replaced by the LCA Plus. This is just a very simple, compact, point-and-shoot camera with a good lens that has some good like vignetting and color rendering with automatic aperture or selectable between 2.8 to 16 on this one and zone focusing with 0.8, 1.5, 3 meters and infinity. Uh, I picked this up around 2003, 2004. I certainly remember having a number of various 35 millimeter film cameras in the 90s, just point and shoots. I don't remember what any of those cameras are. They were nothing remarkable. But I did like taking pictures, sometimes of friends, but I've always been someone who takes pictures of buildings and streets. And a lot of those cameras did not take the pictures that I wanted. This one did, uh, for being a simple point and shoot. This camera has attitude and it's kind of whole ethos is don't think just shoot have fun take a picture and just capture something and see how it turns out the camera will do its best to make it look good and it generally works when i was on a trip this past summer i had my former fuji xe3 and my x pro one as kind of my primary cameras and i brought along the lomo lca the Lumix LX7, and the teeny tiny Pentax Auto 110, 110 format SLR. Uh, I brought those along as kind of tertiary cameras. They were small, they were just in the, generally in a tote bag I had over my shoulder with some Dreamcatcher merchandise and while the, the Fuji films were what I was really shooting with. But I could grab those and either get an interesting shot on film or the LX7 I had in black and white mode and uh, square format, uh, which I've had it in that setup since getting the Fujifilm cameras. And I would just point and capture various extra shots, kind of the equivalent of B-roll footage. And I had a lot of fun with that, and sometimes uh, at least on the LX7, the pictures came out better than what I was doing on the Fuji films, where I was trying to take manual control of everything, and I'm not a pro, I'm just doing this for fun. And sometimes I, I notice just that attitude of that railroad bridge which looks cool, snap, would sometimes just get better shots than that railroad bridge looks cool, and me messing around with all these settings and slightly missing the focus or slightly mess getting the exposure wrong because I don't know if I want it lighter or darker and the idea of having cameras that are kind of just for fun that are small that can be those tertiary cameras along on a trip or it can be a, a pocketable camera I can carry around places where I don't want the full X-Pro to be with me. Uh, really appealed. So, this is the Fujifilm X-M1 with the Lomo LCA 32mm art lens. Uh, this is an M-mount lens. I have this on the Seven Artisans Close Focus Adapter. Uh, kind of my preferred adapter because I like getting that extra bit of close focus and it also helps over other cheap adapters to get infinite focus when this focus lever is at infinity. Sometimes you need to shim it out 
like a tenth of a millimeter you can do that with this this lens has basically the same settings as on the LCA camera itself four zones 0.8 meters with kind of a nice gap between it and 1.5 for focusing between those spots it snaps at 1.5 snaps again at 3 meters and ends up at infinity and generally just flipping between these 1.5 and 3 meters gets you about everything you also have aperture ring here on the in the middle it goes from 2.8 all the way up to f22 and it has a tiny little lens cap that screws on so you can pocket this kind of without worry of this falling off but it also kind of makes it slow if you're bringing it out of pocket to capture something uh, to have to twist this off it may be safe and fine in many cases to keep it kind of in pocket like this if it's the only thing the lens is a little bit recessed and but i do like that that is secure side by side this is actually basically the same height as the lca especially at its highest point just a tiny bit wider about half a centimeter. The Panasonic Lumix LX7 is about the same size as that LCA. I think like the Ricoh GRs are in that same size range if even a little bit more compact. But this for an interchangeable X-mount lens I think is about as small as you can get. With the XM1 you get the X-Trans1 sensor other than that, to get something this small, you have to go to the XA series, which are Bayer sensors. Uh, I know the XA1 is almost the exact same camera as this, but with the Bayer sensor instead of X-Trans. And if given the choice, why not go with X-Trans? It's a unique sensor. It has good colors, uh, good image quality and it's kind of unique and has attitude like the LCA itself. This camera is not a miniature X-Pro or XE one. Go with version ones of all of those. Those are the other X-Trans one cameras. This is basically an entry-level camera. It is much more contemporary style with uh, ex exposure shooting selection knob here a general purpose knob here instead of the exposure compensation dial though in most modes that's how this acts but i miss seeing the actual exposure settings for this setup it's i generally like to keep it in kind of as automatic as possible and just use the focus and the aperture and I try to keep the aperture kind of locked when I'm out knowing what I if I'm going out just f5.6 f8 so in quick summary before talk showing some photos and talking about them uh, I think it's really worthwhile to do something like this make yourself find yourself a camera kit with an older cheap camera put some very slim profile lenses on it and kind of use it as uh, treat it like a X70 or a Ricoh GR but maybe cheaper and weirder and more lo-fi and just have fun with it and I think this particular setup is pretty good this lens does retail for 250 I do not see them used very much, so they are usually at that price. Combined with XM1s in summer of 2022, uh, this setup runs about 500, 550 in total. You can get XM1s for 150 to 225 dollars US here in September 2022. 
I wouldn't mind uh, Fuji releasing another super compact point and shoot or a super compact X mount body with X trans sensor. It does suck not having the viewfinder, especially coming from an X Pro with the wonderful viewfinder in the X Pro 2, especially. The X Pro 1's EVF is meh, but still. Uh, I do miss having that, but that's what makes this different. It's don't think, just shoot, have some fun, carry this in places where you might not carry your larger camera, and use lenses that have some character and are compact instead of trying to be perfect. Here are some pictures with this combination. These are not the greatest pictures, but this is kind of what I like to shoot. But this was also kind of just a chance to test this out and get some footage for uh, this video. Well, we start out with, with these cones. Uh, these was, This is some sidewalk uh, construction going on right next door, basically. And this is about 8 in the morning, and I wanted to kind of just see the colors of these cones captured on the XM1. This is using just the straight ahead Provia profile, all other settings at zero, shadow, tone, highlight tone, color saturation, everything's kind of neutral, and just kind of what this lens captures onto this sensor. JPEGs straight out of camera. Oh, you see some decent depth of field with this stop sign and color capture. Better depth of field shown here with this sunflower. Good detail, great color. Um, another sunflower, different. Again, really seeing some good depth of field here for such a low profile lens setup and great detail and color. I think. These red flowers, something interesting is going on here. I mean, these look interesting to the naked eye. They're very vibrant. This is in the Provia color mode, so it's not Velvia. It's not being kind of further enhanced by the camera. I do think this lens really, reds do tend to pop out on it quite a bit, and while not a compositionally interesting shot, the colors here, this does feel very lomo to me. By comparison, this uh, Ukraine flag, much more subtle colors, but still very vivid, clean, easy to kind of grab this focus and just shoot. Some black and white of that construction by me, you can may or may not see there is a man laying down in there. I tried to shoot from the hip and I had hoped to catch the guy but I totally missed the shot. Switch it back, I switched back to color. Here we see kind of the infinity focus problem. Uh, I was not on the Seven Artisans adapter, I was just on uh, I think the Photodiox uh, basic adapter and I had the camera set to infinity and was but everything looks a little soft and without looking through the viewfinder focus peaking is only in the color white and white focus peaking on a white building is kind of hard to see and on an LCD in sunlight uh, reverse on a back screen in sunlight hard to see a couple of more shots of the neighborhood back in black and white mode this camera only has one custom setting uh, as opposed to like the 7 of most Fujifilm cameras but I find that kind of nice and I've started treating this like I treat the LX7 where the main mode or one of the main modes is square shooting black and white using kind of a dramatic monochrome recipe from Fuji X Weekly that was made especially for the XM1 some flowers in black and white, but showing kind of 
the different shades of green as captured there. And these color flowers, the exposure compensation here is up a bit high, so this is brighter than it should be, but I wanted to try to capture the colors. Back to black and white, looking at this man walking. I did zoom in, I got the focus on him just right. This is a very dramatic black and white set. We deliver for you. I was happy to capture this Call Your Grandma bench and have kind of the right light to get it, um, even though it's very blown out in the background. This people crossing the street is just, it's just that. It's not really meant to be a remarkable picture, but I really took this one for the color and just kind of to show that orange with that shirt. We are now in Astia profile, which does uh, have slightly richer colors, but is not as uh, nearly as saturated and rich as the Velvia mode. But this is what I think the X-Trans one does seem to capture really well. I don't know, I like how it captures shirts. And finally, here again are some flowers. And this was really to try to see the colors of this setup. This is still Astia. You see the the greens, lots of different shades of green here, of various, of a lot of different plants. All of that showing up very vividly, and these red pink flowers really popping out. Uh, this is actually still in shade, but I think this is kind of a good showing of what this lens and this sensor can do. This is straight out of camera and I don't know, it is rich and fun. Good shadows, good good little bit of everything. And finally we come back to the construction around home and just kind of showing that the colors come out very cleanly, the image can be very sharp, and that this can be a fun lens to go and fun camera to shoot with that is very compact and is kind of an alternate to Fujifilm's current lack of a super compact point and shoot camera. It is manual, you do have to manually focus, but with the zone focusing, it's fairly easy and it's fun.